All right, we just saw here in example number three how we could use the ratio test to help us determine whether or not a series obtains one of these particular titles. Now, in example four, we're going to see a very, very similar question. Determine with justification, does this series converge absolutely? Is it conditionally convergent? Or is it regular old divergent? Now, I'm actually not going to go through a full uh, argument here. I'm going to leave some of this for you. But I want to go ahead and highlight one important thing that will probably happen to you at some point when attempting to answer a question like this using the ratio test. So the first thing that I'll note is, again, that uh, we see that the series contains only non-zero terms, right? Like definitely I'm never going to get something in there equal to zero. So I can go ahead and I can start to set up a nice little uh, limit. Let's see, I'm going to have my row equals my limit and approaches infinity. I'm going to have negative one to the n plus one. I'm going to have big square root n plus 1 all squared minus 0.75. And then, of course, remember all of this is in absolute value bars. In the denominator, I'm going to get almost the same thing, just no n plus 1s. And still in absolute value bars. It's even super easy here to remove the absolute value bars because clearly the square root stuff is always positive. So the only thing here that is making this negative is that those negative one pieces. And so I can rewrite this as just one over the first square root and one over the next square root. Now, if I multiply by the reciprocal here, I can start to get down to something that's kind of convenient looking. I can get one square root. over the other. And of course, if I wanted to, I could actually combine those into a single square root. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this while also simplifying out a little bit what that bottom of the square root, or what the bottom square root there actually looks like. Because the top right now is pretty easy. The denominator, you would notice, would turn into n squared plus 2n Technically plus 0.25. It would be a plus a point or it would be plus a one, but then I gotta subtract the 0.75. So this is kind of what I have, and this is what I want the limit of. If I wanted to be really careful in showing how this would work, I could do a couple different things. I could say that remember I can move my limit to the inside, or I can move it past that square root to deal with this. And it might be really tempting at this point to start thinking about using L'Hopital's rule. But I got to remember, I can't use that unless I stop and convert to an f of x. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but I might not want to. So instead, I'm going to go ahead so I don't have to break the flow of the argument. And I'm going to multiply by 1 over this n squared. If I do that, I can see that I'm going to be left with a 1 minus a 0.75 over an n squared over 1 plus 2 over n plus 0.25 over n squared. And now when I do the limit, I can easily see what I get. I get 1 minus 0 over 1 plus 0 plus 0, which ultimately turns into 1. OK, so that's a lot of work just to get down to the answer for row. But of course, once I've done this, I might be able to go back to the ratio test and see what I can able to conclude. What does the ratio test tell me will happen when I get rho equal to 1? Uh, look back and um, pause the video if you need to. You may notice that something uh, very devastating has happened to us here. If I scroll back and I look at what the ratio test actually says, oh no, if you get 1, the test is inconclusive. You cannot draw any conclusion. Essentially what that means is we just wasted a bunch of time. Um, 
That sucks. I'm going to go ahead and write that here. The ratio test is inconclusive. Notice I haven't answered the question. I still need to go answer the question. It's just that the ratio test is not a tool apparently I can use to help me. That is going to be one of the most disappointing things that you will find when using the ratio test. And sometimes, if you're good, you can see it coming. Like a lot of you might have been able to, almost right from this step right here, you probably could have spotted that we were going to get a 1 on the inside, and the square root of 1 would have been 1. At exactly that point, I would just stop and then th start thinking about another approach, because we can start to see that this is just not going to shape up well. Now, I'm going to leave it to you to actually go back to the 5.5 notes where we said, are there other ways I could determine if this thing is going to be absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent or uh, conditionally divergent? In this case, I think you're going to have to do a whole bunch of stuff, maybe using alternating series tests, maybe using um, something like comparison tests and to try to help understand how we could uh, complete a question like this. But again, I'll leave that for you to try to go ahead and take a look at on your own time. Try to practice this and of course the solutions are posted up online. And as you come across questions, you of course can shoot me an email, send me a photo of your work if you want me to comment on it directly, or talk to me during office hour time. All right. Well, that concludes section 5.6.1. And in the next section, we'll take a look at our final test, which is the, uh, the root test.